Hello, today we are going to talk about FS2 streams. Before we begin actually creating some streams, let's add a couple of imports that we'll need throughout the video. First of all, we'll need some effect type to run our effects in our streams. I'll be using Cats Effect IO, but you can use any other effect that has Cats Effect instances. Speaking of instances, we will also need some for standard library types, and with instances, we'll also need syntax for type classes. So I'm importing that from Cats. Then I'm going to import a utility that I made specifically for this video that's going to allow us to see what our streams are producing without ever hanging our worksheet. And finally, I'm going to import the FS2 stream type, which is the core abstraction in the FS2 library. So now we can define one final utility that will allow us to effectively print values to standard output, and we can start our FS2 adventure. So the simplest possible stream is a stream with just one element. And we can do this, we can create a stream with just one element using stream init. We can see the string representation of our stream next to the, to the code we wrote, thanks to uh, Metal's worksheets. And as you can see, this string representation doesn't really show us anything about the stream. We know there is one element and no effects, but the string representation doesn't give us any of that information. So to actually see some output from that stream, we need to run it somehow. We can do this by converting it to a list. That's probably the simplest way to run a stream when you know you have a finite amount of elements and that the stream is going to complete. In this case, we just have one element, so it's pretty obvious that it'll, it'll complete, but sometimes it's not so obvious. And we can use the utility that I made to make sure that even if the stream is too long for our memory or it takes too much time to evaluate, it doesn't hang our worksheet. Another kind of stream that we can build is a stream of multiple values. We can use the stream apply constructor or just stream and supply some values. And again, we need to somehow run it. In this case, I'll use show values. And this will also allow us to see any effects in the stream that might happen. Speaking of effects, let's build a stream with effects. And I'm going to build a stream that prints a single line to the standard output. And again, this is just a description of an effect and a stream, actually. So we don't see any output yet. And we don't see any values from that stream either. But I can use show values or I can use compile.drain. And if we run that, because this is an IO, we will see the output. So this compile drain part is what gets many people who are starting with FS2. And we are not going to talk about it in depth today, but I can just tell you that this is the part that goes from the stream to the underlying effect type. So from a stream of IO and unit, we go to IO of unit. And then we just run that synchronously. But instead, we could use show values, which is going to do the exact same thing underneath. But then uh, we see the side effect just as a comment. So we've built a couple of streams already, but these are all finite. They have a limited amount of elements and they are pretty simple. We can also build a stream from a list. And this doesn't have to be a list that we just created. This can come from anywhere we want. So it's just one means of combining the world of lists with the world of streams. And again, we can use show values to see what the stream contains. Now let's build a stream that doesn't actually terminate. In fact, we are going to build a stream that has an infinite amount of elements. And we can build one, we can build a stream that has the same value over and over using stream constant. So as the name suggests, this will create an infinite but still pure stream with a constant value. Let's use some string. And this is still, again, just a description, so let's run it. And 
yeah, this is this just says that we have more than 10 elements. This is one of the things that show values does. It limits the amount of values and it also limits the amount of time that evaluating this particular stream can take. But even though this is an infinite stream, I can limit the amount of elements that I'm going to take. I can really just use the take method, just like on a list. And it'll actually limit the amount of values from that stream. And I don't even need to use show values. I could just do to list and this will still complete without hanging my, uh, my worksheet. And once I have received that list, the stream is no longer running. There's nothing, you know, running with that, that infinite stream is just over at this point. Another useful infinite stream can be created using stream iterate. So we can define the value that will be the, the initial value of it, let's say zero, and then we can supply a function that will produce the next element and then the next element and so on. So I can use iterate starting from zero and I'll be adding one. Then I'll use show values. And as you can see, each element is bigger than the previous one by one. I can adjust this function to do pretty much anything. I could subtract, multiply, or do anything else. We can create exponentially growing values if we start from one and multiply. We can do much more, but still, one of the most important things about this is that we can still take and use other combinators like that. Now, what if we want to use more than one stream? Let's remove this and make these streams just streams again. So this will be our first stream and this will be our second stream. Let's imagine we want to first produce five constant values and then eight exponentially growing values. We can do this just by concatenating the streams. And if we run that, it'll do exactly what we want. We can even remove the stake from that part and put it on the whole stream and change it. And still, we are not running the whole infinite stream. We are just asking it to produce some amount of elements. In this case, the A stream produced five and then we have the second stream. So if we ask for five elements, we'll just get the elements from the first stream. If we ask for more, then we'll get two more values from the second stream. And we can do more. We could take this stream of seven elements, let's make it 10. And we can map each of these values. Of course, now they are of different types, but let's make that all numbers, we could map them just like on a list. So we'll just produce numbers that are one greater than the original numbers. And let's run that. So as you can see, operators like map and even flat map are available on streams just like on lists, but they behave slightly differently. Of course, the values that you'll get from them will be the same as you would on a list, but they will not create values eagerly all the time. They will only create values once you need them. So if you flat map each element to an infinite stream of that element, and you limit that to, let's say, five elements, you'll still get just five elements, no infinite stream. And this works even if we use two lists. What is also quite important, we can use effects instead of just mapping or flat mapping. We can use eval map to, for example, print each of these values and then map that result to the value plus one. But now we cannot do to list. To list doesn't work on a stream with effects. So we can do compile to list and then run this IO. And as we'll see in the log in the output for this, the numbers were printed indeed, but we still returned numbers equal to the values printed plus one.
And because each stream can have effects, we can still use flat map here and change a pure stream to a stream with effects. For example, string eval with the sprint line, we can map on the stream level instead of on the effect level. So we don't map on the string line, we map on the whole stream. And this will work in the same way. Even if I change it, it'll produce new numbers, but still it works in the same way as the eval map. So now, instead of producing one element for each of these elements in the original stream, we will produce two. We can do this by saying uh, repeat n and supplying the amount of repeats. But this is quite important. When you repeat a stream, this doesn't work like it would on just a list. When you repeat a stream, you cannot just remember all the values that it produced before. You can reevaluate the whole stream, but this will also trigger all the effects that the original stream had. So in this case, I'll get the duplicated elements, but all the effects were executed twice. So this was only supposed to run like five times, but it's now 10 times because I repeated all the streams twice. Now, what is really important to remember about streams is that because they work in an on-demand fashion, they will only produce values if you need them, if you ask for them. And the consequence of that is that they run by requesting chunks of elements from the source, then transforming these chunks. You can think of chunks as batches. So if you have a sequence of transformations on a stream, they will not all run on the whole set of values produced by that stream. Instead, once a chunk is available, it will be processed by all transformations that requested one. If we create a stream, in this case a stream of exponentially growing values, and print the values at each stage of processing it, you'll see what order the transformations take place in. So first, we iterate from 1 multiplying by 2, then we will add the elements. This will produce a stream like if, if we had 1, 2, 4, and 8, this will change it to 1, 3, 7, and 15. So it'll just take the element, then add it, add the next one to what we had before, then add the next one to what we had before, and so on. So it's sort of like a fold, but it emits all the elements as it goes. Then we will drop all the elements from the prefix of the stream that are smaller than 1000. Then we'll just filter the ones that can be divided by 3, multiply them by 2, and then take just 3 values out of that. And as you can see, this produces 3 values, of course, but we can see in the output that each element was, pre was processed individually. So first we have the two, first two stages for the number one, but it didn't get to the next stage. It didn't get to the next stage because it's drop while smaller than 1000 and one is smaller than 1000. So let's look at the next element. Two also didn't go through. And after the scan step, Instead of a 2, we got 3 because of the 1 from the previous element. And so on, and so on. And we only see the drop stage after a number that's actually greater than 1000. Then we have filter, then we have map, and eventually we'll have take, if we print it, here. This is the first element that actually goes to the step of take. And you can see it in the output. Then we have another one and the last one. So this is it for the first video about FS2. I hope I encourage you to learn more about the library and I'm looking forward to making more videos about it. So see you soon.